Aloha guys, this is Kevin with Blue Planet Surf in Honolulu, Hawaii. One of the, I would say, big questions that we get here at our shop after someone buys a board is what fin setup should they go with? Namely, how many fins do they put on the board to make the board conducive to how they want to use it? For the most part in the stand-up world, we see five fin options available or five fin setup options. Um, and they're all just the number of fins. So you have a single fin setup, two fin setup, three fin setup, four fin setup, and five fin setup. Um, we'll start with a single fin setup, definitely one of the most important fin setups in the stand-up and surfing world. Um, if you run just a single fin, this is what we would recommend for someone looking to do either recreational paddling, um, racing, or kind of old school style surfing. A single fin setup pretty much just gives you the basic control that you need out of your center fin. Um, being positioned in the middle of the board, what your center fin is going to provide is stability, tracking, and control. Um, what you'll notice is the center fin doesn't take up the entire base of our box, so playing around with the position of the center fin inside the box allows us to alter the performance on a very, very subtle level. Um, so if we have the fin farther forward in the box, it's going to allow the board to have a little more maneuverability while decreasing tracking and stability. Vice versa, if we push the fin to the back of the box, it does the opposite. It increases stability and tracking while tightening up the turning or decreasing the maneuverability. Um, but that's your single fin setup. The second fin setup that you'll usually see in the marketplace is a twin fin setup. So a twin fin setup is if you take out your center fin and then you just run the two side fins next to each other. Um, twin fin setups are going to optimize the speed of the board. Um, so it makes them a lot faster just driving down the line. Um, the downside with twin fin setups is you sacrifice a lot of control and thus performance, especially when you're trying to hit kind of more vertical turns on the face of the wave. Um, so if you're the type of surfer or paddler who wants things to be fast and loose, Twin fin setups, or we'll get into them, quad fin setups are going to be probably the most important fin setup for you. Um, after your single fin setup and the twin fin setup, the next fin setup is going to be a two plus one or a thruster setup. So this is us taking our center fin, putting it back in, putting in the side bites um, or side fins and creating a three fin setup. Um, in the surf world, there is a differentiation between a two plus one and a thruster setup. Um, the two plus one is to indicate that there's different size fins in the setup. It's still the three fin setup. Whereas a true thruster setup, the definition of thruster means you have three equal size fins. Um, but overall, a two plus one or a three fin setup is probably the most versatile um, fin setup in the surf world, definitely in the stand-up world as well too. For those of you that are always kind of going back and forth, one day I go surfing, one day I go paddling, it's kind of a nuisance to change your fins out. So the easiest fin setup to leave in there to give you nice all around performance is gonna be a three fin setup. Um, by having the center fin, you're getting your stability, tracking, and control. By adding in the side fins, it just helps you control the board and how you project your board through turns. Um, it contributes a little bit to stability, but more than anything, adding in these extra side fins is all about increasing the surf performance of your board. So if you started out just doing recreational stuff, you're rocking your center fin, and you wanna maybe get into some surfing, catching waves, we would definitely advise adding in your side fins because they help out significantly with surf-related performance. Um, the fourth fin setup that you usually see in the marketplace um, is going to be a quad setup. So a quad setup, we once again have removed our center fin. We're now putting in our trailer fins and giving us a four fin setup. Just like our twin fin setup, because we don't have that center fin inside the board, we're removing a lot of the control and drag that creates that is created from that center fin. But the upside for going with a quad setup and a twin fin setup is the boards are a lot faster um, and the boards are looser in terms of turning. In the surf world, we usually use the term loose to describe kind of a slippery tail. Think of it like power sliding on a car. Um, whereas the three fin setup, if we do have the center fin in here, it's tight turning. It's gonna allow the board to kind of stay tight in the pocket. The last fin setup that you'll usually see in the surf world or the stand-up world is gonna be a five fin setup. Um, that's where you just put all five fins in the board. The only time I personally ever run a five fin setup is if I'm running a quad setup, but my quad setup doesn't provide as much control and kind of bite in the face of the wave. So the way I add a little more controller bite is I put what's called a little nub stair center fin or kind of a little controller fin in the middle of the box. What this is gonna do is it kind of provides all the, the positive qualities that a quad fin setup does. Um, and it provides a little bit of a three fin setup by adding this little bite. So the three fin setup, once again, is all about control. I'm getting a little bit more control back, but I'm not getting a ridiculous amount of control and causing too much tightness in my turning. Um, but that's gonna be the basics for fin setups themselves, different ways you can set up your board. 
Uh, one thing I always tell customers that come into our shop about fin setups is your fin setup can alter the board's performance by anywhere from 10 to 15%. So a lot of people, they look at fins and they just think, ah, just do whatever. For me, I pay close attention because like I said, you can increase a board's performance by getting the right fin setup for how you wanna use it by anywhere from 10 to 15%. Vice versa, if you're choosing the wrong fin setup for how you're using the board, you can actually inhibit the board's performance by 10 to 15%. So fin setup, very, very important. After you figure out what type of fin setup you wanna do, the next thing that, we're wanna, that you'll wanna think about is um, fin shapes. Uh, so this is where we kind of get into the fluid dynamics of fins. We talk about the design of the fin as well as construction materials, which is for the most part going to influence the flex pattern of a fin. So when I'm looking at fins, after I've already determined what fin setup I want to go with, and we start getting into the nitty gritty about construction and shape, the basics of a fin are when you look at it, you have what they call the base of the fin. So the base is the distance from the front or kind of the leading edge of the fin to the back of the fin where it sticks out from the box or the, the back end of the fin. The base is gonna influence your, your board's ability and your fin's ability to generate drive. Base is the main thing that kind of affects how well you can pump down the face of a wave. Um, the second thing that I would look at when I look at the fin is gonna be the height of the fin. Um, so the height of the fin is just wherever the base of the board is and how far it protrudes into the water. So upside down, that would be the height of our fin. Height is gonna affect stability and control. So if you have a taller fin, it's gonna increase the stability for recreational paddling. Um, just as much as if you have a taller fin, it's gonna increase the control of that fin. Keep in mind, control always equates to drag. So more control, more drag from a taller fin. Um, the second or the third thing I guess I look at when I'm looking at a fin is gonna be what they call the rake. So the rake is kind of the angle of that leading edge of the fin. The rake is gonna dictate how you project your turns or kind of your turning arc. If you have a very raked back fin, so let's, let's ignore the baseless fin, but if we have a very raked back fin like this, it's gonna cause you to project wider turns or a wider turning arc. Vice versa, if we have a very vertical rake, it'll allow the board to be a lot more pivoty. So it's gonna keep that turning arc or that turning radius very tight, um, and it's gonna be a very pivoty kind of fin for you. Um, the, let's see, the fourth thing that I look at when I'm looking at fins is gonna be the surface area template or just kind of the shape of the fin. Um, some fins, they have really full bases, and in this case, they have really full tips. Other fins, you have the same base distance, but you can see it kind of tapers out or decreases in surface areas. You go up to the tip. Um, so the, the fourth thing that I kind of look at for fins is going to be the, the surface area of the fin. And then the last thing, if you want to get into very, very nitty gritty details about fin, you can fins, you can look at the construction of a fin or the construction materials. I'm going to grab this just as a sample for us to look at. So this is what we call is from the company futures based out of California. So uh, made in America. Um, this is what we call the tech, tech flex fin. The tech flex fin is all about allowing, the, as the name insinuates, allowing the fin to flex. Um, we'll get into it, but the basics are you have a, con, a carbon fiber base, which is going to provide a lot of stiffness. You have this honeycomb middle section, um, which is going to allow for flex. And then you have more carbon fiber up in the tip, which is going to increase the stiffness in the tip. So when I look at this fin, I'm already concluding that we have a stiff base for lots of drive. You have this flexible area in the middle um, to allow the fin to flex as you're projecting yourself through turns and then it kind of recoils back and snaps back to project you out of that turn. Uh, but we'll get into some of the, the details about construction materials. So in terms of center fins, we do have a nice little display here set up um, showcasing some of the center fins you'll find on the market. Um, I would say in general, this is a standard template that you'll want to look at. If you're just looking for standard performance in the surf world, the stand-up world, whether it be uh, recreational paddling or even surfing, this is the kind of template I would look for. The two fins on the left and the right-hand side of that nine-inch uh, kind of standard template fin, this is when you're gonna get into nitty-gritty details about how that board's actually moving through the water. So we'll start with this one over here. This one, when we look at the, the components, you have a very full base. So base, of course, is gonna allow for drive as well as kind of affecting your turning arc. Um, we have a, I would say just a standard templated rake to me. So this is gonna provide a turning arc or turning radius comparable to a standard template. What really stands out to me about this fin is this very kind of high volume tip. Um, Cause once again, if we, if we put a standard template fin on top of that, we can see we're, we're acquiring or gaining all of this extra surface area. So all of that extra surface area is gonna interact with the water. What this fin to me is gonna be used for is for more stability, for more control, 
and then also for nose riding performance. For me, when I look at fins, I like to have a lot of surface area up in the tip of my fin to help contribute to nose riding capabilities. But more than anything, we're gonna see kind of ease of use by having all the surface area. If we move over three fins to this guy, um, what you'll notice if we stack these on top of each other is once again, we have a relatively similar rake design. So in terms of the uh, turning angle or the turning radius, it's gonna be kind of comparable to a standard templated fin. I mean, you can see it's a little more vertical up in the front of the fin, but the distinguishing factor for this top fin is this area. And thankfully we surfers name things easily. This is what they call a cutaway. So it would be like taking this template, you cut away that tail section of the standard template, and that gives you this fin, which is our cutaway fin. What this fin is all about doing is decreasing our base of the fin. And what that allows is it allows for a lot more maneuverability. It, it decreases the turning arc. So it makes the fin a lot more pivoty. Um, so it's gonna be a lot easier to maneuver that fin. The upside of cutaway fins is we're still maintaining a pretty solid height. So this is a nine inch fin. This is probably what we would recommend for a single fin surfing like a nine foot stand up or nine foot longboard. Um, but you're maintaining the height and the stability by having a nine inch fin, you're opening up the maneuverability by removing this cutaway section. And then as we just move kind of down the line over here, we see an eight inch fin. Um, this is a standard template. So once again, one of the rules of thumb that I haven't mentioned yet, but if you're running a single fin setup, we tell people for every inch of fin, you probably want a foot of board or vice versa. For every foot of board, you want an inch of fin. If you add side bites, we tell people remove two inches from that rule of thumb. So this eight inch fin would be designed for single fin surfing, an eight foot longboard or stand up, or this could be an eight inch center fin on a two plus one setup for a 10 foot longboard or 10 foot stand up paddleboard. Um, the next fin we have is another kind of interesting looking shape. So once again, to me, one of the distinguishing features that I notice is a decreased base. So we are going to have automatically less drive, but increased maneuverability. The other thing that's unique about this fin, I call this a cutaway and I call it a squirrel cutaway. Because if you look at the shape of this fin, you can see it's a little more bulbous in the tip. It almost kind of looks like a squirrel's tail. So when I look at this fin, I think squirrel cutaway. And what this is all about is very pivoty maneuverability because we have a nice tight base. But when we have a voluminous tip like this, this is gonna contribute to a little bit of stability as well as nose riding performance. So one of my preferences for my nose riding boards is I like to see fins like this, squirrel cutaways, decreased bases, nice voluminous tips. Um, going down the line, we got another seven inch standard template, so we'll ignore that. Um, we got another cutaway. This is a six and a half inch cutaway. Um, so this size fin would be something good for maybe someone longboarding, like a, I don't know, an eight foot longboard, maybe a nine foot longboard. Um, depending on what kind of side fins they're looking at. And then as we just kind of progress down the line, we see a lot more of just standard templates, mostly in different sizes. The last thing that I'll want to mention, um, let me just drop this down over here really quick. We talked about it when we did our five fin setup, um, but I, I personally love using these little fins. We call them nubsters. Um, some people call them guitar pick fins. What these do really well is they provide just a hair of control and stability. Like let's say you're running a twin fin or quad fin setup and you don't want as much control as a three fin or five fin setup would offer. This will allow you to kind of get like a two and a half fin setup or like a, a four and a half fin setup. So nubsters are great because they can provide a little bit of variability in terms of what kind of control you're going to be getting. Um, so that's looking at center fins and center fin templates. Up behind that, we have uh, more details that kind of get into the specific constructions about fins. Um, so here, just to get started, we have um, what Futures calls Thermotech. Thermotech for me is, is, no offense Futures, it's just kind of a fancy word for plastic, um, but these are just plastic fins. So plastic fins are one of the least expensive ways you can get yourself in the water. Um, they provide general performance, but I can guarantee you they will never, ever, ever provide comparable performance to a nice fiberglass or carbon fiber fin. Um, I mean, you can just look at the flex pattern on these. There's no way you're gonna generate a lot of drive from this kind of a fin. So these are good because they're safe. Um, the downside is you compromise performance. Um, going down the line, we have one of the, I would say more uniquely designed fins. Um, this is from also a company in California. They're called AU Fins. Um, what's unique about these is this very interesting shape to them. So if you just kind of compare up a fin, the whole purpose of this fin is to control the fluid dynamics and how the water is flowing. 
Um, it essentially creates a little bit of a circular vortex in this kind of curved area. My own personal experience with AU fins is you almost feel that vortex of water underneath the fin, but more than anything, the way I describe them is they're very loose. Um, whether I was running a, a thruster setup or a twin fin or a, a four fin setup, I found that the AU fins and the way they were designed to create these circular vortexes of water, they loosened up the turning while providing a little bit more drive. But th this is one of the craziest fins we'll ever see on the market. Um, moving a little bit down the line, this is actually one of my favorite fin templates um, for stand-up and shortboarding, actually. Um, this is kind of a keel style fin. Um, this one is in particular made with bamboo. So the bamboo is gonna alter the flex pattern a little bit, but for the most part, this is solid fiberglass. So you can see when I'm trying to move this thing around, this doesn't flex. Whereas if I go back to a plastic fin, you can see that these fins flex no problem. So a big fin like this, kind of like center fins, you have tons and tons of surface area when you compare it up to sort of a traditional template. So all that extra surface area is going to influence how the fin is moving through the water and thus how you're moving through the water. For me, keel fins, the reason I like them is you get the speed of a twin fin setup, but you get a little bit more control because you have a little more surface area. So if you're one of those guys who really likes pumping down the line and just generating a lot of speed, you like loose turns, or if your wave conditions are relatively mushier, um, definitely consider a keel style fin because these allow you to get through sections that thruster fins would create too much drag for. Moving down the line a little bit more, we have another Futures fin setup. This is from their five fin Jamie Mitchell set. When these guys are designing fins and having the pattern be this shape, it's very specific because they're trying to control the flex pattern. So what I see with a carbon base is lots of stiffness at the base, which generates lots of drive and speed. And then not having carbon in the tip, this is probably a honeycomb tip underneath this uh, camel pattern. That's gonna allow for flex in the tip. So very drivey because you have a nice stiff base, but you're gonna get a nice flex pattern because the tip doesn't have that carbon fiber. Um, kind of same thing as we move down towards the Dave Rostovich set, um, except the flex pattern is gonna be induced by bamboo instead of carbon fiber. And one thing that I'll just note, um, just because it's kind of interesting to me, but if you look at the bamboo, they actually assign the bamboo striation or grains to be horizontal, whereas for this one, they had it vertical. So I can only fathom that futures engineers and designers, there's a reason they had the, the grain go front to back instead of top to bottom. And that's all gonna be how they wanna influence the flex pattern on that fin. Moving down, um, we have a Jordy Smith fin setup. This is just their standard honeycomb fin setup. You can kind of tell by the honeycomb pattern in the back. Honeycomb fins are all about um, reducing weight. By having a foam core or a honeycomb core, you get strength from that honeycomb core, but you reduce weight because it's foam on the inside rather than being a solid fiberglass fin. So the upside is decreased weight. The potential downside, if you don't like it, is these will be a lot more flexy than a solid fiberglass fin. Um, but weight reduction is one of the main benefits of going with honeycomb. We transition down over to here and we have the Hayden Shapes Generation Series. And this is one of the fins, kind of like the TechFlex that we talked about in the beginning. These are fins where you look at the construction materials and how they're laying it up. Um, and you can see the engineering and design ideas behind it. So once again, with this carbon fiber base and this pattern, we see that we have a nice solid carbon fiber base for generating drive and speed. Um, that, that carbon fiber material is pulled up in kind of a semi-circular shape, which is gonna keep that stiffness up through the middle of the fin. And then it looks like they run, I, I would call it kind of like a unidirectional carbon because they have these little sections of carbon. It's probably 4K carbon, but because they add it vertical like this, um, it's gonna contribute to the stiffness. So when I look at this fin, what I see is a very, very stiff base for drive and speed. We have kind of a stiff skeletal reinforcement up in the top of that carbon, but they leave the back or the tip of the fin honeycomb. So what that's gonna allow is this whole section of the fin is gonna be very, very flexible. This is gonna be very, very stiff on the base, and then you have kind of a medium stiffness section in the middle. Um, so these to me are just gonna be very, very all around performance fins that will probably have a very, very nice flex pattern because you get a little bit of flex in the tip. Last fin that we'll go over um, is gonna be the Tech Flexes. So we kind of looked at them early on, but once again, we start with a very uh, nice stiff carbon base. So that's gonna provide a lot of drive. The middle of the fin or the middle section is pure honeycomb. So that's gonna give you a flex area. So everywhere it's orange is gonna be designed for flexing and then the tips. Um, they're reinforced with carbon again, which is gonna help them make, uh, help make them very, very stiff um, to provide a lot of flex. But that's a lot of information about fins. 
I hope you're able to catch it all. If not, rewind, watch it all over again. Um, the other thing you can do is you can always visit us at our shop. We're based in Honolulu, Hawaii, um, or you can always call us. Uh, we're always happy to talk with people over the phone and help them navigate the board product selection process. Um, so if you need anything from us, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Aloha, and we'll see you on the water.